In this episode of the podcast, we're moving, well, not moving actually, but we're going to travel in two different ways. One, we're going to join my guest on this episode who comes from Bosnia-Herzegovina. We're going to find out a little bit more about this in a minute, but just in brief terms, he's left Bosnia-Herzegovina and at the moment is in Andalusia in Spain. And the other journey we're going to make is into a fantasy world, but a special fantasy world like no other. And that's the two things we're going to find out about today. I'm joined in Andalusia at the moment by Mila Marcic. Mila comes from Merkonicgrad, which is a short way, by my standards anyway, south of Banja Luka. As I normally start these episodes, and I think, although it can be a little bit difficult for the person that gets the question, I think it's the best answers you can ever get. Who is Mila Marcic? First, thanks, David, for having me. Um, uh, I am Mila Micic, and but I really appreciate your way of pronunciation and uh, your way of being there in Bosnia uh, as well. I am a guy from Mrkonic who used to live and study a lot in Banja Luka. So I have my two towns that are close to my heart. One is Mrkonic, other is Banja Luka. But now, I, as you said in your intro, I am in Andalusia, in the south of Spain. And I would say one of the only places I could live outside of Bosnia is Spain and where I am now. What interested you about Spain? How did you actually arrive there? Most people from Bosnia-Herzegovina, if they decide to move away from the country, go to places like Austria, uh, the United States or Australia. And you are the first person, actually, that I've come across that ended up in Andalusia in Spain. How did that happen? Yes, exactly. I am one of the people who never wanted to leave Bosnia in a way that I even had a jokes writing and while I was playing guitar in Banja Luka at the time in the streets i had some kind of things going right wrote there in front of me i don't want to give this like my diploma to schwab or to germany but I, because i wanted to stay there and i wanted to find um, the work uh, in bosnia it's actually how bosana came to be is because of my love uh, for all bosnia has to offer like primarily cultural heritage but then one summer back in 2018 I had amazing opportunity to get to know the most amazing person in this world. And she's Spanish. She's from Andalusia. And eventually we came to live here. It's a quite a long story, but to put it short, we tried to do something in Bosnia. We tried that she get a residency to stay and to try their things. But then in the end of the day, here it was much easier, so... We decided to move on. So me being here in Spain, it's not because of the work or something, but it's because of, I would say, better cause. You're very into culture. We're going to come into that because that's yeah. going to reflect in the story of, and you've alluded to it already, Bosana. Just over my shoulder is a framed picture of something that is very traditional from your area and you're wearing it today. So culture means a lot to you, right? Exactly. It's, this is a Zmijanje Embriori, or uh, something that's being around from my area. It's close to Mrkonić. It's, I would say, in between Mrkonić and Banja Luka. Banja Luka says it's their own heritage, but also Mrkonić, when you look back to the folklore, my grandma was making these things. Also inside of Mrkonić folklore dressing, you can see a lot of, and I would say in Banja Luka heritage as well. So I love it. I cannot express how much I love the culture. I love the culture of all the people, especially our own. But also here in, in Andalus, I was a little bit... When I came here first, I expected more of that culture shock. But then I was surprised that Andalusia... I would say Andalusia of entire Spain has that most of Spanish, Spanish feeling to it. Even though it also has a lot of influence from the other Western countries. I would say like from America, like everyone, like international. It's more international. But I'm still trying to get to, to know that true Andalusian heritage, which is incredible. And you can see it mostly when here it's Christmas and you go around in Gitanos when they do their own things around and that uh, flamenco and when they do it, uh, I don't know. It's incredible. But also, as you can see here, this is what we have there in Bosnia. And it's simply incredible. And I'm afraid 
that it's getting lost more and more. Are there any cultural similarities? For me, as a Brit living here, it's been very difficult to find cultural similarities, um, which I don't find bad at all because I'm, like you, I'm fascinated. You've grown up with the culture here. I'm fascinated with the culture here. But are there for you in uh, Andalusia any cultural comparisons or near comparisons to what you were used to when you grew up near Maconich? Cultural similarities. Oh, I would say that Spain has something similar, other things very much different. I would say one of the main differences that I saw here in Andalusia comparing to Balkans is their dedication and ritual for the food or with the food that they have. For them, the food is one of the most important things. While back in the place where I grew up, food for us, it's, yeah, we just eat, you know, eat in the speed and then we continue our life. You know, just like we eat for, yeah, we have to eat. No, here they take food so seriously. Even though up to the moment where the lunches can go to four hours, five hours in length, the variety of food that they do here is a little bit different as well. Besides the food, what we have similar, I would say, is some kind of hospitality. I'm not sure if that is more common with the countries in the south of Europe, but we have that exactly here in, in Andalusia as well. Their hospitality is also really incredible because I was accepted here as literally one of the Spanish. I didn't have, I didn't have some kind of expat or a foreigner a welcome. Yeah, so that is one thing that I can relate that's similar like we have there. Your linguistic skills are, are, are pretty evident at the moment that you speak such really good English. My Serbsky, I think, is slab, to say the <laughs> least. But I get by. How is it with you with Spanish? Because I follow a lot of Spanish films. I know that I use uh, the subtitles to understand what's happening, in, especially in the TV series. But it, even to somebody like me, I've now realised that there are people from the Basque region and other regions of Spain, they have these dialects. And even within themselves, they refer sometimes to different regions with a bit of derogatory talk. Oh, he comes from the Basque. What, what, you'd only expect that because he's a Basque. Uh, as a foreigner, as a Stranatz in Spain, how do you get by with language skills? Have you managed to master it yet? I love languages. First of all, I love languages. And the second of all, I like to observe I like to observe people a lot and I like to imitate different accents that they have here. First of all, I also want, would like to say something about Spain, which, which I found interesting, is that for me, because now when you mentioned the Basque and, and other autonomous uh, regions in Spain, is that for me, Spain is somehow, if, imagine if you have a Balkan as a one country, so that's a Spain. Spain has inside of it, I think, five languages that people speak five different languages, uh, and also the dialects. For example, they call Spanish language, they call Castellano, or uh, like I think it's like originated and they say the most proper Spanish that they speak is in the Castilla y León. But then on the south, you have Andalusia. And the way how they speak is sometimes I go to hairdresser or when people come to house to fix some things, like to do some plumbing. No way you can understand what they're saying. They use... They cut the words. They, instead of, par for, for example, in Spanish, in Castellano, people can say, esto no me gusta, esto no me gusta, da igual. But, but in Spain, in, in Andalusia, they will say, for example, esto no me gusta, es que no puedo entender que, que tú vas a decir y algo así. I don't know. It's a really different way of how they speak in South. And then I came to learn Spanish. I didn't came to learn Spanish but I want to understand Spanish language a lot. And I came to Andalusia and I'm learning from the hardest, from the hardest Spanish. But once I, once I understand the Andalusian accent, I think I will be able to understand all the, all the Spanish. Um, and then here I just learn by listening to the people. And I, I don't know, in one day it's just click. And... You said about that you observe things and your observations of your own culture, your observations of your own country, your observations of the region's pretty dynamic past and history has brought you now together with your skills, 
your illustration and storytelling skills. So that's resulted in Bosana. But before we actually talk about uh, Bosana, did you study storytelling skills at further education or is it something that you stumbled across? Since I was a kid, I was immersed into a lot of animation video, animation like movies. And besides that, I remember when we were kids, we were playing the games where we were inventing the stories. We were always inventing the characters. And I always had that wish of making my own world. Somehow it came up back when I was in college. And then when I realized actually that amazing cultural heritage that we have and that it can be done something. At the moment, I was doing research about the animation, about the framing, uh, the camera angle, the storytelling a little bit, not that much. And then I realized really uh, more of a dreaming thing is that I, I, as I thought in the moment, it will be amazing to make an animation movie based on our own cultural heritage. And at the moment, it was like, yeah, animation movie has so much work involved too and so many people working together to make it happen so i'm like mm, okay maybe not animation and so on but besides that since i come from background of illustration and character design i did a lot of video lessons that were explaining for example the storyboard the composition of the elements the camera and inside of that as well the storytelling and especially the body language I love body language. I love observe people and their body language because in the medium of illustration, and for example, the storyboard, you should be able to say so much without saying a word, like the those black and white movies with Charlie Chaplin, that he was able to say so much without saying a word. So the same when I was studying the storyboarding, and I can say in some way storytelling with the with the acting out, that's the only touch that I came in in that storytelling world. So tell me now about Bosana. How long have you been at it so far? Bosana is a personal project. It's uh, something that started out back in 2016. I would say even before. Just that before 2016, it was a completely different thing that evolved into what is it now. And it had, I would say, four different stages of the world building. And now we are in, I would say, the final stage where I wouldn't cancel out if the story changes and evolves with the time. Bosana is a country, right? It's a country that you have created. Can you tell me what is Bosana? How has it come to be? What is the history of Bosana? I like to look at the Bosana uh, being a canvas where I can paint my, my experiences and my observations uh, throughout the life of the people that I encounter in Bosnia and also worldwide. But besides that, it's it's a fantasy world. Bosana is like a little planet when I started to imagine it, like little planet where some people live inside and they deal with the problems that we have. Just the inspiration of Bosana is took from, mostly from Bosnia, I would say, even though it does not mirror it 100% in a sense that Bosana has its problems. Bosnia has its problems. The Bosana problems are kind of um, influenced by Bosnia problems and Bosnian people, Bosnian nationalities. But on the other hand, inside Bosana, there is living different people. Even though they are inspired by people in Bosnia, they are different and with their own struggles and things. In a short, yeah, it's a fantasy world inspired by Bosnia, I would say. The inspiration that you talk about is reflected, and I, I'll be totally transparent here, I have had a view into it, we've chatted offline, and I've looked at all your content that you've created so far, and there's going to be links to that in the show notes to this. But the inspiration, I see some of it, as you say, there's all the influences, there are the struggles, and I actually think you address some of the misperceptions um, of the country. As far as inspiration is concerned, I showed one of the clips you told me, one of the things that you'd made, and I showed it to the family. They actually knew the person that had inspired you, this particular character. We won't blow that now. That should be for people to find out when they see it. But how much inspiration of things that you've seen and experienced is in Bosana? I would say the most. And the cultural heritage that we have. And when I say, say about Bosana and inspiration, I try most to speak about Krajina region where I come from. 
and this Mianya region is that all of this that you see. For example, the, the characters in Bosana will have some kind of... The clothes that they are going to wear will try to imitate this Mianya embryo, even though this is way too complex to draw on every character because you have to draw one character so many times, so they will be kind of stylized. But besides that, it's the world where I grew up and all the ups and downs and political struggles, the three nationalities that are all the time struggle between themselves, the religion conflicts that we had and the war. Because the war that we had in the 90s also happened in Bosana. Just yes, in Bosana it didn't happen in the 90s, but it happened. And Bosana is also divided with those people inside, like the people are divided in Bosnia. But what I wanted to focus in Bosana it's not that specifically on nationalities and religion uh, divisions that we have, but I try to separate those people in a different way and to give them uh, some specific meanings where it doesn't matter if you are a Serb, Croat, or a Bosniak living in Bosnia, you don't know who is who in Bosana, even though they are divided with different colors between themselves, but no one knows who refers to who. And I did that intentionally because... I remember when I was building Bosana World back in 2018 and there was some kind of interesting project going on that in the end never never was realized. And I heard people saying, yeah, but how are you going to deal with those things? Like everyone, you will always have someone telling you rather he will be Serb, for example, saying, and why is called Bosana? Why it's not called Serbana, for example? And maybe someone else from the other group of people might say, yeah, but why Bosana people wear that kind of clothing? Why they don't wear this kind of clothing? Or you can say, oh, why the color is like that? There are things that for sure will happen, but I'm trying to focus on what connects all of the people. And I admire that our people in Bosnia have resilience and that we endured so much throughout all of these centuries, being conquered by so many different nations and we are still there we are still standing and i think that is something that i want to portray in characters and in the people of bosana that resilience and that resilience can hopefully skip the differences that we have and that other people can see something in those characters regarding think, who they are do you think in a way that when the story of bosana gets traction and and a lot of people um, are watching. It, it, it doesn't matter from whether it's outside Bosnia Herzegovina or within side. Bosnia yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Do you do you think there's a healing effect? A healing effect. I wouldn't know how to answer that question. I just know that I hope that throughout the story, people will be able to see reflection of themselves in the characters. And since the characters are fighting their own battles. Maybe the people or the readers could see, uh, could reflect their own struggles in the characters and to see that they are not alone in this battle. And for example, one of the main characters, main protagonists, he's still in the search. He's lost and he's still searching his place of being. He's searching the place of belonging. And a lot of us nowadays are lost and hopefully... It doesn't matter from what country you come from. You can relate yourself with the characters from the stories. In the end, stories are for that, right? To get touched to the people. It doesn't matter. I watched so many movies and animation movies that come from different cultures, from the Chinese culture, from the American culture, from the English. For, for example, I love Terry Pratchett since you are from Great Britain. And I've read a lot of uh, Discworld uh, novels. And they are based in the fantasy world and completely... Even though he does a lot of satira and, and humor, but you can relate. It doesn't matter from where the inspiration comes from, what background it comes from. You can, I think people can relate. And that's hopefully it's what's going to happen with Bosana. For me, there's a difference between Terry Pratchett and you in so far as uh, when I've seen and, and looked at what the limited amount of content that I've been able to access at the moment, we, I was saying to Tamara when I saw your animations and, and your drawings of some of the villages, and we did mention this offline, but I, I'm going to say this anyway. The next time I go to Selenkovac, to me, I'm going to be going to Bosana.
that that is what I I do with Basana because I want to promote what we have and. Zelenkovac is, is one magical place next to my town where I grew up. People from Bosnia probably know it. It has amazing jazz festival during the summer, and I highly uh, encourage you to visit it. It's incredible. You can see entire Milky Way on the sky uh, in the night. Um, but besides that, it, it inspired me so much that I wanted to put Zelenkovac inside the story. And I did it. I, I twisted out the Zelenkovac, and I created one one place inside the world where part of the story is going to take place. And the character who lives in the cottages there, even though he has one visual trait that shares the owner of Zelenkovac, the character of that person inside Bosana, it's nothing to do with the guy who owns the Zelenkovac. But he has some kind of visual visual touches that that might be similar but yeah i love to inspire myself from bosnia cultural heritage and the the architecture so yeah how many people are there then come on let us know i know two now one that we discussed who is on television oh how many people how how many people (laughs) have you seen do you actually see people that have got something and then go i've got to do a character about that and if that is the case how long does it take you it's not something that you surely scribble down and create in 15 minutes. How long does it take once you've seen somebody and you go, wow, I could make a character out of this person for Basana? No, I do. What is the process? I do that on a daily basis. I <laughs> love to for people. And Susanna sometimes tell me, like, you are uh, like a creep. You are a creep. You don't want I don't you don't want to see my phone. If you see my phone, you can you could see a lot of photos of random people in the streets that I see interesting and that I want to make them uh, characters. But just the visual is not enough. There is a lot of visual, visual, interestingly visual people. But also what drives me most about people is their character. Sometimes they're amazing people. There is a lot of amazing people I met throughout my life. And some characters of Bosana are mashup of those people. You have a protagonist Let's call him protagonist in a, in, a, in in this conversation, even though he kind of, I would say, let's say he's a protagonist. Okay, so for example, him, he's a mashup of um, of four people that I know. Uh, the other character that comes with him is a mashup of three, three different uh, uh, person. So it's hard, and and if I find someone extremely characteristic. I could put like entire personality and the characteristic of that guy inside the comic. But more than not, they are a mashup of more people that I know. With Basana, I'm going to say this now, you have the opportunity to people to support you through exclusive content. And one of the things I've noticed about you, you're absolutely brutally open to the people that want to support you and the people that want to get involved in following this journey. There was a recent post where you explained the pain, if I can put it that way, of trying to write uh, a dialogue for a particular scene. And where you thought, I think, that 20 minutes I'll have this done, it took in excess of six hours, writer's block and with creator's block. How do you get over, one, those creator's blocks, and two, how insecure do you feel or maybe not when you to your supporters when you actually open up and say these are the issues and these are the problems that I'm having today and that's not what not not everybody can do that because a lot of people feel deeply personal and want to hide themselves away yeah I know I mean at the moment I, I really don't care like I don't care so much that in a way that I had this Bosana project for a while now and I got tired of myself. I got tired of all of those fears that I had. And then I realized all the people, so many people that I speak with, all of them struggle with their insecurities, with their fears. People try to hide it or they try to mask them. But then what I realized is that when we open ourselves, the people can uh, recognize themselves in those other people. And so that's what I'm doing. I just want to make the transparent how hard and sometimes hard and exhausting the process of making comic 
actually is, but at the same time is rewarding because at the end of the day, you see that episode. And even though I can always come back and say, yeah, I can fix this, I can fix that, whatever. I met a friend who once told me that the artist is known by his next project. And it really hit me in a way that at the moment I was struggling with, with Bosana. And I was always coming back and redrawing, rewriting, redrawing, rewriting. And then I just thought, the artist is known for his next project. And in my case, I was like, yeah, the artist is known for its next comic page. And so I just let it go. Just, I don't want to curse, but... Deet. And Vosana just started out. And I thought to myself, yeah, it's time. Like, you cannot be in the shadows all the time, hiding, trying to make something again and again to search some perfection, that actually there is no perfection. And also, I remember speaking with, uh, with my wife, uh, about it, saying that I was afraid of how the story of Bosana is going to go. And I was like, yeah, the storyline, it's not good. Maybe people are not going to understand it and so on. And then we watched like million and million of movies and the animation movies. And then it, you just see that and you say, yeah, but the story doesn't have sense. And they put millions of dollars inside of the production. So many people working on it. And then in the end, yeah, the story doesn't have sense. And also, one of my biggest inspiration is, and my, amazing, my most favorite uh, cartoons and comics also is Asterix and Obelix. And I remember reading the comics at the beginning of Asterix. They had no sense. And they were so, comparing to nowadays, ugly drawn. Let's call it that way. They are not ugly drawn. But comparing to nowadays, the quality went like rocket. It rocketed up how it used to be in the beginning and then I just thought to myself yeah just let it go just make Bosana rolling out eventually people will see the story there will be people who will critique it they will say yeah it's a beep or it's a something else there will be people who will say yeah it's amazing maybe it's it inspired me to do something on my own because I see a lot of people who struggle with their own creation and they don't know how to exit that blockade I know a lot of people who are amazing writers. One of the guys who was actually helping me write Bosana is an amazing writer. I know other ones who are amazing poets who do incredible things, but they are afraid. And they never go that direction. And I understand. At the end of the day, you have to survive. You have to work for your bread, how we say in, in Serbian. Maybe I hope also with Bosana that I can inspire some of those people to look again back to themselves and say, maybe... I can do something with this art. It wasn't too many years after moving here, when I came to the village, our nearest town is Laktashi, that I saw something and it was Stripovi. There's an annual meeting da, 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 da. and I go to every one. I'm going to look around now and the day that I need it, I can't find it. Yes, I have. I have bought some books and Stripovi means cartoons for those that don't know. And I have bought some books, excellently drawn and fascinating, although they're not in the English language, that doesn't matter. And I was really impressed with this, so much so that Tamara said, if you like cartoons, and then she goes into uh, a box of what she had when uh, she was young here, and I've just found it. Alan Ford. An Alan Ford. This is an original. Alan Ford is incredible. This is an original Alan Ford. Those sort of books and those sort of cartoons are like, Amazing. And I know now from research that it is a big thing in the Balkan region, bigger, I think, actually, in relative terms to the United Kingdom. Mila, do you see Bassana appearing in some of these future, <clears throat> how do they call them, strip of Isayama, these exhibitions where, you know, you actually don't go not to, to, to do a viewing of books of what you want to buy, but you actually get to see the artist sat there and I'm always impressed that there's these young kids like six and seven sat down trying to draw cartoons. I think it's a, an amazing thing. Is Bosana in the future going to appear in books that people will be able to buy, not only in this region, but worldwide and to see on YouTube or some streaming platform or is the dream to have it actually on international television or on Netflix maybe? I went to Leskovac comic fair and also to Laktashi Comic Fair as well. They are amazing places. And I actually showcased Bosana in Leskovac, I think, four years ago, where I made, I made actually a book. 
I'm not sure where the book is now. But they made an art book of Bosana where it showcases the, the art and, and everything. But do I see Bosana on some kind of like that in the future? To be honest, I would like to see. It's why not? It's not bad. But my prim- primary focus is that I want to tell this story. And I want that people read the story. That's the first. And I want that people get to know our cultural heritage and uh, that people immerse with the characters. And secondly, if that story reaches out some kind of publisher that wants to put it to some kind of uh, book uh, stores or something, I wouldn't say no. If Bosana stays like a webcomic, I will be also happy if it has uh, an audience uh, if people uh, enjoy reading and if people can get uh, past their fears or even something better, reading Bosana. Because for me, telling the story is most important. To see what you're doing at the moment, you're using a number of cartoon platforms, but you're focusing your efforts for the public at, at any rate to Patreon, which is a platform where you can see things for free. But there is this ability for people to support you. A lot of people in this region, I know because I speak to them, say the internet has got enough free stuff, we don't need to support people. But without support, artists like you struggle to create something absolutely wonderful. How much effort do you put in to explaining to people the value of what you're doing and that you can offer them something in return for their real tangible financial support because you just can't keep doing this as a hobby, can you? I understand the people in in Bosnia. And we went through a lot of things. We always, as much as we can, we will grab things that are for free. But they understand that because of financial struggle primarily and secondly because of we don't have the habit to pay for the services that we can get free. It's that kind of culture that we have and I cannot blame them. But like you said, I cannot make Bosana without earning. I'm trying to post Bosana every Friday. I will try to push it as much as I can in the weekends, in my free time. But I will have to earn some money in order to make a living. And especially here in Spain, where the price is a little bit higher than in Bosnia. But understand that. And what I want to give people, the Patreon, for example, that you mentioned. Patreon is amazing. It's one platform that I discovered lately and it's just simply amazing because the audience that arrive on Patreon is the one that really wants and supports what you do. And I want to offer them for themselves become part of the world, that themselves become a character of Bosana. As Bosana has a hierarchy of people, like in the real life, like you have a villager, you have a citizen, you have a I don't know, the, the royal, you have an elite, and, and so on. Like, you have those kind of tiers of, of population. So the same is going to be in Bosana. You can pay, I think now it's you can enroll in some membership that's $25 per month, and you will be able to get yourself a citizenship card of Bosana. I will look to, to make a character out of you. And you will be able to choose what kind of nation you will like to belong to. And there are so far th- four main nations in Bosana, and they have different colors. And so the person who decides to be to become a character of Bosana will have their own personality in that fantasy world. And I'm building a lot of villages in Bosana, and and those characters can live in those villages. So if some character is drawn in a village, let's call the village Vrelo. So when characters walk through Vrelo, maybe they will see you in the background in some kind of shot or camera item. Finally, when are we going to see you back here? I'm trying my best to come at least uh, once per year or two times per year, depending. I always come for Christmas. And for Slava, I'm trying to come, but it's difficult sometimes because of the connections. So I'm coming once twice per year and then I stay for a long time because I don't have a physical place of work. I work online. So if I'm there, I also can give myself luxury to stay for one month or two months. 
next time you come back, the coffees are on me. And we can do a typical Balkan coffee, <clears throat> which means it's not like the five, 10 minute rush that it is in Europe. We can take a good few hours and catch up. What would, with the audience that is watching and listening to this podcast, you've got the opportunity now for maybe a new audience what would you like to say to them about how they can help with you and Bosana? They can always join the Patreon. They can always join the community that, that I'm trying to make. But besides that, I would like that they don't stop. There is so much fear in this world, inside, internal and external. And I will just love to, for them to not to destroy that fear and to try to create something on their own because I know so much incredible people who are still afraid. And if they can see something nice in Bosana, if they can see that fear not being present, and if they want to join that community inside of other people who are trying, who can see something and, and push themselves more inside of that Bosana, they are more free to join the Patreon. Or also on Instagram, where ever, everything will be posting, on Facebook, there is a Facebook page of Posana where you can see. But I, while I, what I prefer Patreon is that it jumps the algorithm, and there I will be posting always first before, and then on other social medias. And there will be direct links where to read. It's so easy to to reach, and uh, I don't know. But there, I would say. Mila, thank you so much for your time today. 20 thank you. Thank 20, you. 20 thumbs up for success. And we'll put into the diary soon, 12 months on, and we'll see how many people have occupied those villages in, yeah. Bos in Bosana. And uh, we'll see how the character that both of us know about, we'll see what uh, adventures he gets up to. Thanks for joining me today.